something called diplomatic immunity. Diplomatic immunity. In other words, God didn't just drop you off in a nation and say, go for yourself. No, he didn't. Look at what Jesus said. Now he said he's the original ambassador. So he's gone back, seated at the right hand of the father. Now he's the king directing traffic. And he now is telling you where to go. He said in John 17, as the father sent me, now I'm sending you. All right. Now, look what he said in Matthew 26, because he's talking about his protection in that foreign nation. Because they said, hey, don't you know we can do this and do that to you? He said, thinketh thou that I can now pray the father and he shall pres presently give me what? More than, come on, 12 legions of angels. 12 legions of angels. This is to protect him from the enemy to try to get, to try to destroy him from, from not finishing his work here in this earth. So he didn't have any problems with it. He knew that he could pray and the angels would come and they'd get him out of anything. Over in 2 Kings chapter 19, the man prayed, the king, and he prayed because the enemy was too much for him. And in verse 35 of 2 Kings uh, chapter 19 in verse 35, and it came past that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of Assyria a hundred and four score and five thousand. And when they were, arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. Not some of them living, all dead, all dead. Now this is the protection that you have. The Bible says over in Hebrews chapter one, and verse 14, the Bible says to you, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be what? Yes. Heirs of salvation, the ambassadors. So uh, the angels are ministering what? Spirits. Spirits, meaning that you can't see them. But when you call, See, so you, you cannot go into these places and listen to the news talking about diseases and so forth and start saying something crazy because then your angels will just back up and let you get your head beat in because they uh, cannot overstep your authority. Now, <clears throat> can we keep going? So how about, and over in Psalm chapter 91, look what it says here. They shall not, there shall no evil befall you, ambassador, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. Thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but this disease shall not come now, you. Only with your eyes shall you behold, see the reward of the wicked. Why? Because you have made the Lord, which is your refuge, even the most high, come on, your habitation. There shall no no evil, no evil befall you. Neither shall any come nigh your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you. And they're going to what? Psalm, Psalm chapter 103 and verse 19. 103 and verse 19. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruled over all. 
angels are part of his kingdom and it's going to rule over all. All right. God always leaves you with a choice. He always leaves you with a choice. And you can choose one or the other. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. And he says that I call heaven and earth the record this day against you that I've set before you life and death, come on, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose what? Life that both you and your seed may live. Now, how do you choose it? Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it, come on, shall eat the what? Fruit, fruit, fruitful, fruit. And I'm saying you can say some things in the middle of some plague going on and the next thing you know, no angels are protecting. No, come on now. And I'm saying that wasn't the way God intended it. He intended for you and me to make the right choice. Over in the book of Genesis and Genesis chapter 37, and this is when Jacob's sons played a trick on Jacob. And what they did is they brought, verse 32, they brought here Joseph's clothing with blood on it. And they sent the coat of, of many colors uh, and they brought it to the father, to their father and said, this have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, it is my son's coat. An evil beast has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt what? Ren and Peter. This is the father. What did he choose? He chose death. Why? Because he saw circumstances which the enemy deceptively put up. And I'm telling you, you can't go by what you see. You've got to go by your constitution which says that a thousand may fall at your side, that if you hold your mouth, you'll rescue not only you, but your seed. And that media is trying to paint a picture that this thing's supposed to come to you too. It'll try to qualify it. Well, it seems to be having most effect on people over this age and people who've got some other diseases and so forth. Get rid of that. Come on, that enemy is using that media to stir up fear. And fear will make you say stuff that you never thought you would say. Job said, teach me in chapter six of Job and I'll hold my tongue. I think it's 24. And show me where I have messed up. He said, I hold my tongue. The reason why I got wiped out in my business, I got my kids are killed, so forth, because of my tongue. My tongue, I could have held my tongue and protected my whole house. But that enemy will show you things over and over again in your mind and over and over again in your mind and then that condemnation come in and say, oh yeah, I did that when I was unsaved and I shouldn't have done that. And next thing you do, you're weakening, weakening, pretty soon start coming out your mouth. Now the angels going to fold their hands. Now that's just what Satan wants you because he wants a representative. He wants to hit somebody and say, see there? No, see there, they could have, should have shut their mouth. And I'm telling you, life and death, where? On the power of the tongue. So I don't care how bad it looks, you speak life. Say amen to that. 
I'm telling you, the devil can even make the instruments that the doctor use be off. They told this man, took x-rays that he had cancer and he got there and he did an autopsy when he died and was not a trace of cancer in his body. I don't believe nothing but the word of God. Man, that, 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 that's the key right there, man. 